going to bring in Lisa Rose. She is a children's author and has a new book out right now, A Zombie Vacation. How did you come up with this? How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I came up with the idea. I was really researching the Dead Sea, and I discovered that the Dead Sea loses one meter per year, which in English terms is three feet. Wow. And I thought that is a lot. So places that that I went to at the Dead Sea like 20 years ago that were right on the beach were like, you have to get into like the golf cart and like go down and schlep to the beach. And I thought, wow, that's, that's amazing. And it, at the story actually started out as kind of a travel guide to say, here, hurry up and visit the Dead Sea before it disappears. And um, it was it was it was very playful. And the editor said that um, we needed to have more of a story arc. And I thought, well, who would want to visit the Dead Sea and obviously a zombie? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're definitely in character today. So the book, how do people find the book? And I will say, let's just back up here for a second, because I went on your website and I watched <laughs> your videos. You are so fun. Do you scare the kids or attract the kids, though? I, well, you know what? It's very strange now because I have to do everything, obviously, over over Zoom and in a, in a virtual setting. So it is kind of strange to do it that way for me. I'm a very, I'm a recovering first grade teacher. So I like to really be present with the kids. And I always look forward to the questions like, what is your second favorite reptile? And do you like ketchup? And all sorts of questions that they don't feel as comfortable asking over Zoom. Um, but they, um, so I have to, to do the, the virtual the virtual meetings. But back before when we had all the uh, in person, it was it was much easier to get them excited about being dressed up. However, what I do ask is my kids dress up. So we're all getting kind of like Zoom fatigued <laughs> and so are the kids, but they love seeing everybody in costume. So we kind of make it a big party that everybody dresses up. Halloween is coming up. So it is, it's much more fun to be at a meeting in costume than it is just to be at a meeting. So. <laughs> Lisa Rose with us. She is a children's author joining us today on the Oakland County Mega Castle. So you talk about being a recovering first grade teacher, interacting with children uh, very often throughout your career, and, and that, of course, inspiring your writings as well. How has the pandemic and the perspective of children going through this pandemic impacted your creative process, if at all? Um. Well, really, when everybody was watching Tiger King <laughs> and taking advantage of Netflix, I actually really relished the time to to write. Um, I also have a daughter who is having, you know, virtual school as well. So I, I kind of took that time to, um, I think, feel like rather than um, feeling really confined to have the creativity, that outlet to say that this is a special time where I can be in a hole and I can create. So that, um, that I think was very beneficial for me. Um, as far as the pandemic, kids adapt. I mean, they're very adaptable. And yes, it's, it's hard and, and I'm like most parents and going, when are we going back to school? I am also currently a reading specialist as well. And it is very, very hard to, to teach online. I would much rather teach in person. So I think that um, like everyone, we're just kind of taking one day at a time and figuring it out. 
but also savoring the fact that I can reach people over Zoom that I wouldn't be able to reach if I was in my classroom. And prior to COVID, a lot of us uh, weren't even familiar with the Zoom platform. And so we weren't as comfortable as using it in a big setting as if like we are doing now. Lisa Rose with <laughs> us on the Oakland County Mega Cast. How hard is it to write a children's book? Well, it's not hard to write one. It's hard to write a good one and then to sell it. <laughs> <laughs> and during a pandemic. Uh, well, this was two years before. See, okay. people don't understand that um, writing a children's book is is actually a very long process and with most things it requires a team so i work on these stories and i work with a critique group and then i polish up this story and i'm traditionally published so i work with an agent so i send it to my agent and then she decides whether she likes it or not to send it off to a publisher and then the publisher decides whether or not they can publish it and this process can take anywhere from, from six months to a year to several years until you have a, a draft that you feel is good enough for, for a publisher to look at. And then with the case of Zombie Vacation, it actually took two rounds before they accepted it. And then when they accept it, it could take two more years for it to actually be published. And what they do is the publisher matches you with an illustrator. I know there's a lot of people that think, you know, I'm hand in hand with the illustrator talking about all the, the, all the drawings, but no, nope, it was her book. She did the drawings. I got to see some of them before they were published and, and, and then the book comes out. So if I sold a book today, so if my agent calls right now and says, Lisa, you sold a book it probably won't be out until two years. So I didn't really, um, when we were going through all of this, you know, I had no idea we were gonna be in the middle of a pandemic, but I'm really happy because this one is a really, really fun book. And I think we all kind of look like this after <laughs> staying at home for so long. And it's, um, and it's just really fun. And the kids are having a lot of fun with it. And I think, that's what's really important is that we have to remember how to laugh and have fun, even though it is a very challenging time. The illustrations are absolutely fabulous. And like you said, they are fun as well. With so many bookstores closing down, as an author with a book, how do you break in to get your book noticed? So, because at the end of the day, you wanna sell it, but the, the normal platforms aren't there so much anymore. And, and now that bookstores are reopening, it still seems we don't have as many of them. And there are so many children's books on the shelves. How do you stand out? You try to do everything you can. <laughs> Which is why you're dressed as a zombie right now. You're right. You try to do everything you can. I am fortunate in the sense that a zombie vacation will be part of what is called the PJ library. So that is, um, they send out Jewish themed books to children across the world, really. So um, about a few months from now, a zombie vacation will go to probably over 25,000 homes in North America. Wow. So my, my first picture book, The Shmula Paints the Town, was a PJ Library selection in 2016 and then again in 2020. So it went out to um, probably combined over 50,000 homes. Um, that helps with being in the PJ library to because there are PJ library communities in pretty much every city um, in North America and then across the world. So that is a very um, small section, but getting out to the larger community, um, that's always challenging. And um, 
to, you know, we're all trying to find, find a way to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stand out in a crowd, I will tell you that. And, and, re, and reinvent yourself on, on social media and, and just really having a, a fun time with it. And I think that if you have a, a good book and you're excited to share it and uh, that, that people, people are going to find it. Lisa Rose with us. She's a children's author, author joining us today on the Oakland County Megacast. Lisa, just another few minutes with you today before we'll have to let you go. Anything else you'd like to talk about regarding, um, regarding your book, A Zombie Vacation, or any of your other writings possibly, or uh, what's next in the future? Um, actually, April 1st, I have a, a very serious, very serious nonfiction book coming out about the friendship between Marian Anderson and Albert Einstein. Marian Anderson was denied a room after she sung at Princeton and Albert Einstein overheard this conversation. He attended the concert and he said, here, come home with me. And they became friends up until his, his death. And um, it's very, um, I think it's a very important book right now when we talk about the state of race in our country. So um, I am happy though that I get to do something fun <laughs> before something very serious. So um, for right now, I am scheduling virtual author visits and I can come to classrooms here in, in Oakland County and really across the country and the world. And I think it's really important that the kids, because authors used to be able to do school visits. And I think it's so important for kids to know that authors are really, they're alive, they're real people, they have laundry, they have cats. <laughs> and to know that that, wow, I can, someone actually that I know wrote this book and to have that personal connection. So, on my website, lisaroserights.com, you can contact me and I can come to your classroom virtually and kids can ask questions and I can talk about writing just in the same way that I would be in their school. You definitely have a very interesting backdrop behind you. So <laughs> I give you like uh, the gold star for that. Definitely out of the last few months, yours is very cute. Very, very cute. Real quickly before we let you go, you are so talented. And to be able to cross genres the way you do, what advice do you give to other inspiring writers and authors right now? You have to write what touches you. Um, Jane Yolen said it very best. She says, write your heart, but don't break your heart if it doesn't sell. And I think um, I always kind of root for the underdog and all of my books, even though there's very diverse, I write funny picture books, I have very serious picture books, I have a chapter book series about a second grade girl who wants to be an astronaut and also uses a wheelchair. Um, but all of them are about just having that that unheard be heard, whether that is a zombie. And really the zombie book is essentially about being your amazing self. You know, he didn't feel like himself and he had to get to where he felt like himself again. And so I think that you have to find that voice inside of you and write that voice. For you. I know you mentioned social media and trying to stand out. Is there a platform for writers or aspiring writers that they can maybe post it and have it critiqued from different individuals? There's tons of platforms, <laughs> but really what you would want to do is you would want to join the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators. SCBWI.org. 
And that is where you can connect with other authors and illustrators in your community and you can get supported with your, with your writing. Um, that really helped me. I, I, actually, I actually started out as a, as a playwright at, at, in college. And then I, I like I told you, I taught first grade. So I just kind of kind of fell into the picture books. <laughs> but um, I, I had a lot of writing background before, but we always need work. I mean, one of the things that I really love showing with my my students is I show them the writing process all the way through. So even though my book is accepted and going to be published, they always like to see how my editor marks up my manuscript and that even though I'm an adult and I'm a published author, that I am still working on my writing and keep working and working and working. And when I go to schools, I always have my big bucket of rejection letters <laughs> and I dump them all over the floor. And I say that if I stopped, you know, after someone said no to me, that I wouldn't, um, that, I, that I wouldn't be an author and, and wouldn't be speaking with them today. And I, and I call it the power of yet that you know, you have to say to yourself, I'm not a published author yet, and put it in that that framework. And every no, you just say, not yet, not yet, not yet. And you keep going. And that can apply to anything in, in life. It can apply to, you know, doing math problems or doing I'm not good at this yet, or I'm not the basketball star yet or I'm not a doctor yet. And just keep encouraging kids that you're not going to get it on the first or the second time. And I probably have probably 50 versions of this book and it was just not yet. And you just can't give up. That is such great advice for all of us. It has been such a pleasure having you with us on the Oakland County Megacast. And what a great last interview to close out the week. We say thank you so much, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, and I hope everyone gets a zombie vacation.